Okay. So I'm here in Korea. I found an easier way to um, do pre-cut labels, right? So we are using Wasatch. So what I'm going to do with you guys now is actually go through uh, the actual setup of um, your paper and uh, how to measure your paper, actually working out averages of each label. Um, so you can put in the correct values on um, on Wasatch so you can get the um, end product that you desire. Okay, so Enutron is a little different uh, in the sense as um, considering the label size, it tells you you can work out uh, how many labels uh, per page. So if you're in the area of 0 0.5 to 2 inch uh, label size, you're looking at 20 labels per page and so on. So you can see 2 inch to 5 inch is 5 pages, 5 inch to 10 inch is 2 pages, and 10 inch is 1 page on its own. Okay, so even before sitting at your PC, um, the easiest thing to do first is to work out the average of your uh, label size. Um, this is taken from the top of the label. And we know the size of our labels is between the um, 2 and 5 inch. So we know a page on this here is a five labels. So we're going to work on an average using ten labels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, let's make it twenty. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Right there. We actually got to take it to the top of the next label. Okay, so working on average, we know that over 20 labels, uh, including the 20 gaps, it's 1173. To find the average on that day, we just simply divide. If I can find my divide. Okay, we divide by the amount of labels that we covered, which is 20 labels, which gives us an average of 58.65. Now, this is a more accurate um, value to you that we are going to use later. Also note that 58.65 is the label size plus uh, the gap size. So uh, once we have this here, we can now go and design or import our label because I am so uh, graphically um, challenged, I will use paint. So in paint we have our page, I must just make this smaller. We, what we simply doing here is actually just... Um, resizing the image okay so once we have that Once you have that, we're actually going to um, resize this here to the actual uh, label size I measured earlier, and the label size that we are using is 111 by 56. So 111 would be 11.10 by 56, which would be 5.6. Okay, so we can see here that that is our label size. So I then resize it accordingly.
Okay, so once that is resized, we can then save as. We can put change that. Okay, so and hit save. So now that we have that, we can open up our Wasatch program. Okay. All right. So we can actually add our artwork. Okay. So we add that. So things to remember now. We gotta go and change some of the settings. Okay, so first things first, we gotta change that. You can see we're using art paper, pre cut 111 by 56. We can choose that, then we're going to edit. In edit, we go into properties to see. Um, the width, the width that we use is always the maximum width of 215 by 9. We always keep it adjustable. And our registration mark that we worked at earlier was 58.65. So you can just put it in 58.65. And our start position would be 4.5. Our start position, we can play around with it, uh, depending on the output of your test. Once that is, uh, all the values are put in, you can then click OK. And then you can see your color profile. Make sure under the ICC output profile that what you have selected before, OK, art paper black is in there. You can actually see the profile of your color. Alright, so you can close that, close that, and click OK. Then you can click on Transforms, go into Calibration, and you can see your calibration curves. Once all of that is set, you can click OK, OK. You can rename it. Yes. Now that it's set, we look at our values here. We always set maximum width and maximum height. All right. Very important though. When you're in properties, Wasatch does all the work for you, so the only value that you would use is your register mark period, which we have worked out earlier. That register mark period is actually the, um, the label size plus your gap size. But because, um, because um, the label size plus gap is not very accurate, we use the average size, which we have worked out earlier. Once all of that is set, then you can add your graphic to the layout. That's how it would look. Now, before we print, um, we have to use the Anycom. So we can actually use the Anycom to um, tell our Anytron to cut after the specified label. So, right, this option is to tell the printer how many copies we want of the label. So we will go 30, All right? We can minimize the Wasatch program and open the Anycom. Okay, once we open the Anycom, we go open. Make sure you are connected to the printer.
once we are connected to the printer, we can open up the Anycom application. On the Anycom, you click on open. Before to check connection, you go into the command text box, type in V E R, and you can see you are connected to the printer. Then your print count, you can click in 30. and click set so you can see information sent to the printer cut 30 you can open up then open up your wasatch wasatch you can you see your copies to print is 30 and you simply use the print button to print okay very important the setting of the paper uh, it has to be in line for you to get the correct output. This is JK, my oh, homeboy no. from Korea. They named the sandwich after him at uh, Jimmy's, the JK47. He's going to be assisting me. Okay, very simple threading process. So the basic setup is actually. Um, to set up from the front and then work your way to the roll. So JK will, will then set, you will get the measurement from the station to the um, left hand side of the paper. Make sure your roll is tight. Okay, also, we gotta make sure that your sensor is set correctly. So, every time it hits a gap, your orange light comes on. Just to let you know that it is picking up the gaps. So, once all your values have been put in and you show that the information that you have given to the PC and printer is correct, you can then hit the print button. Display screen will first say processing and then data present, and it will then take. If you can hear the beep, every time it passes the gap, it counts. Coming out on the other side, you can see. And you can see the end result. That is a machine cutting. When it does cut, you will see that it cuts after your job. That is the on the fly cutting. So there is no wastage after you've cut. 